How's Chris Tana feeling? Tanny is, uh, he'll be game time, but he's come a long ways, right? You know, for not skating, for going through a lot of testing and things like that. So it's basically, basically kind of his call now. What goes into choosing your starting goalie on the first half of a back-to-back -back here? Does that thought process work for you? It's like the last game of the year for us. Way different than anything else, right? And uh, Marky's been really, really good for us for quite a while now. So he's earned that right for sure. And I guess fatigue, does that, like, do you try and manage energy or how does that work for a coach trying to figure out that? With what? With, like, playing a guy on back-to-backs, does fatigue become a... Do your homework. You'll see the last time he played back-to-backs, what, <laughs> what he did <laughs> with travel. So you got to put all that into it, right? It's, you know what? If it's game seven, you went your, your ace. Can you speak to how proud you are of this team, showing the resilience it has and, and, and making it, putting up the good fight right to the end? It's hard in Canada to do that with their, right, Eric? Right? So you got to win tonight because if you don't win tonight, then, then it's the other way tomorrow, right? But it's hard in Canada to do that because every day it's, there, there's no isolation for them, right? There's several markets, that, most markets, you know what? Three weeks ago it was over, and, and they've heard it and seen it. And so the only way you do it is stick together, right? And you have to just manifest that sort of trust in each other and, and then go from there. Errol, with back-to-back -back come from behind wins and four straight wins, does it feel to you like there's a different energy with the team, or are they been no, consistent? No, no. I think that... And I'm firm in that, right? I don't think that that's changed at all. I mean, that's, you've asked that question a lot this year. That hasn't changed. It's not about confidence or any of that stuff. It's about just getting the job done. And, and you know, we know it's, we're, we know why we're behind the eight ball. So that's not like a mystery to us. So now it's, it's just, just trying to get the job done. I just want to circle back to your answer to Eric because it strikes me like that it's not something you can necessarily impact as a coach is how they're going to react to all that outside noise. So what's made this group one that it's sort of just brought them closer together? Well, I, I think what what's really important in it all is is because when it's all said and done, you're, everything's is on expectations, right? So maybe those expectations weren't very good ones. It's not that easy. I've said it before, and everybody should listen to both this division. you you got to play 600 hockey. There's four of them that are doing it right now, if you look at it. I said it, and you guys are all said it over and over and over. It's a tough, it's the only division that's got four teams playing 600 hockey. So it's not, everybody thinks playoffs are a given. Well, it's not a given, that's for sure. There's half the teams make it, and there'll be, what, this year, five or six that, that you'd think, I mean, there's five or six different teams going to make it this year, and that's going to happen every year. So the only way you can become a champion, the only way ever you do it, is do it, make the playoffs over and over. The only way you can train yourself to be a playoff player is to play playoff games. So that's what's got to happen. Very, very clear. So is it easy? Nope, it's not easy. And back to Eric's question, well, that's how you toughen up, right? You find out we've been having to play playoffs for you take out whatever it is that first six or seven weeks of the season. Well, we've played 650 hockey, even though everybody says it's been like that. Well, if you look at it, really, it really hasn't. You take out that below 500 start, whatever it is, and then then you'll see that hey, you've played you've played over 600, but it just tells you the consistency of it all. Haven't had many practice days, but it's been I think a week since. Yeah. It's been a week since Coronado got here. How valuable has just being around? Yeah, I enjoy really having them kids here. Yeah. Right off the top, right? Those kids give you different type of energy, and it's 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 strictly situation for those guys, right? That's why they're that's why they're not playing. Why one of them, and, and then you have to do it by position. So, you know, like Maddie's a right right winger only. So okay, then so. 
where's that slot? And, and Felch is the left winger, only the, where's that slot? And, you know, so that's how you got to look at it. You can't look at them as a group, you just look at them as individuals. And so understanding, you know, a week and a half ago, he was on campus at Harvard. What is the value of him being around this, whether he's playing or Men. not? Man, he's seeing it every day, right? It's awesome for him, I think. The Blackhawks team that you were competing with so hard back in the early 2010s, yeah. but uh, they've won the first two games of the season series. What yeah. challenges do they present? They're fa the, the two biggest things we've had trouble with Chicago with is, is their pace, right? and that could be ours. Not there, but theirs was there. That's the dif difference in the two games. Jonathan Taves' future is a little bit uncertain. Just what what memories do you have of competing against him over uh, his career? Uh, I think it goes way back back to seeing him World Juniors, uh, that sort of thing, and then um, and then obviously the there's three teams that were doing most of the damage out west here. Chicago being one of them. I mean, but we we played each other. Uh, conference finals. I mean, we knew we knew to win the cup, we were going to have to go through Chicago, right? So we did it against each other, and you know, you get a lot of respect for when they beat you and when you beat them. That's the bottom line. That's a, that's his career has been. That's the perfect captain when you look at it. Daryl, prior to Chris going down, how were you liking uh, Mackenzie and Rasmus on a pairing together? You know, when we were trying to. Turn the corner there again. Um, it was something we really wanted to look at. It wasn't so much. Uh, I wanted. I wanted to get Tanny with Noah. You know because they'd. Uh, you know they'd been. They'd played together in years past. Not so much last year, but they. So we were just trying to get. Uh, you know the top four settled in in the right way. So. Uh, how did we like it? I mean, I, I like it. I like those four together. Like. If they're healthy and can give you even strength minutes. What have you thought of Troy Stetcher's play and how he's adjusted to playing uh, your style? You know, we've, uh, you know, we got Troy when Stoney was banged up there and we needed him big time. I think he's given us some energy. He's a real popular guy with the team and I think it's evident in his play.